Hello, everyone. It's so wonderful to be here today. My name is Gabrielle Taswell. I am a multimedia journalist and writer for 2190. And today we will be speaking with the one and only Yvonne Orji, notable writer, comedian, and actress. How are you today, Yvonne? I am doing very, very well. Thank you. And you look good, girl. You look good. Oh, not as good as you, but thank you so <laughs> much for the compliment. Just <laughs> so let's it. just dive. Yes, right? Let's dive right into your background. I guess, can you tell us a little bit about who you are? How did you move into the film and TV industry starting off? Oh, man. So um, I'm a child of immigrants. I was born in Nigeria. I moved to PG County, Maryland when I got to America when I was six. And, uh, you know, I thought, like, I was going to do the traditional immigrant path, uh, you know, doctor, lawyer, engineer, et cetera. And then when I was in my grad program getting my master's in public health, uh, I entered a pageant. I did comedy for the first time and haven't looked back since. You know, also didn't go to med school, so there's that. Uh, but it was, it was that kind of first initiation into entertainment that got me hooked and i was like wait how what what is this i, I didn't even know that people made a living <laughs> in entertainment like i knew i had tv i watched family you know family matters and i was like oh this is cool right you know, <laughs> you know i was just like some way somehow stuff shows up on my tv um and when i discovered that like this is a job uh i was like all right well i don't know I don't know how this works, but I basically took everything I learned as a child of immigrants and everything I would have applied to medical school into being an entertainer. So that drive, the work ethic, the perseverance, the just can't stop, won't stop ness of it all. And you know, here we are, we made it. Mama, we made it. Mama, we made it. Here we are, here you are. Again, looking stunning and just manifesting the life of your dreams, which is so amazing. I guess, you know, Insecure was such a beloved show by millions of people, including myself. Can you tell us how the show transformed your life and how has it helped you on your journey of becoming who you are today? Um, well, Insecure changed my life just in general. You know, it was, the, it was, it's a dream job. Literally, you know, when people are like, oh, you know, I, I work in the industry. I'm like, no, it was my dream job. And I'm so grateful to have come out the gate and become such a, you know, I can't play such an iconic character. Um, and then also get to work with such beautiful human beings every day. I'm like, they pay me to do this. Do they know? <laughs> like, Ethan and I would always be like, does HBO know? Cause like we are enjoying ourselves. We're having fun. And it's like, and, and then we get the check. So, right. uh, you know, being able to manifest that aspect of the dreams that I had held on so tightly to, you know, continue the journey. Like I always knew I wanted to do comedy and I always knew that I wanted to, you know, write when, you know, when things just started skyrocketing and rolling, I was like, okay, this feels natural. I want to do that. This feels natural. I want to mm. do that as opposed to like, everyone else is doing this. Let me do that too. It was like, no, it's like, it, it just, it made me know and understand only do the stuff that really really aligns with who you are and what you want to do because then that's when it'll actually have maximum impact right that's so beautiful though and i think that that's such an inspiration for everyone else especially black women who again like don't always believe that they're worthy or deserving of taking up space um, especially in these high industries you know and i think that again you are serving as the perfect role model for them like wow, if she can do this, maybe I can do this too. So that is such a beautiful thing. Well, thank you. I mean, I say that I say that in, in the first page of my book. I'm like, listen, y'all, yes. I'm not that special. I'm just a, a black girl who just decided to say yes to a lot of stuff that most people said no to. And, you know, and then just, and then did it well. Um, and so it, it really is just, you know, taking risks, sometimes calculated, sometimes, you know, they're not they're not the sexy jobs, they're not the high paying things, but they are the things that lead you to um, the best self and your best life. So, you know, if I can do it, I be you can do it too. I promise you. Oh, that's everything. And I guess like moving on to the next question, you know, talking about just like softness and luxury. You know, a lot of us 
you know, are starting to move into this new era of the soft life. Um, hopefully, you know, I'm sure you've seen it. It's all over Instagram, all over TikTok. Um, can you like walk us through, I guess, your own view of this and why we as black women deserve to live in luxury, why we deserve to live in softness? Oh, I've, I'm the president of uh, Weak Black Women Society. I'm not I'm not anybody's strong black woman anymore. I'm tired. I'm mm. exhausted. OK, yes. I need help. Yeah. So it's not a badge of honor <laughs> to be a strong black woman. Y'all can have it. We've been strong forever. We're good. I have nothing to prove to anybody. Right. Please help me, you know, and so I'm I'm good on on that. And so whether it's called the soft life or just the tired life, I'm baby, I'm, I'm tapping out. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm very open and vocal. I'm listen, I, I, I'm a child of immigrants. I Nigerian women are known for their strength. And listen, I will never not be strong, but I'm resting more in my ability to, to not need to show up as overly strong for no reason. Like, some, please, someone else can carry the burden for me. For That's me. beautiful, mm-hmm. though. <laughs> That's beautiful, though. Like, literally, you yeah. know, just prioritizing the no's. Like, no, I do not want to do this. No, I do not want to work extra hours. I don't want to take this job. Period. No explanation. That's just what I got to do. Or yeah. also, can you help me? Because I think yes. we felt like yeah. we had to be the strong black woman just because it was like, well, we don't want him to think that we can. Or we- I don't care what you think. If you think I can't, you're right. So can you help me? Thank you. Can we both stay late? Great. <laughs> I'm like, I don't right. care. I Listen, I'm still going to get everything that's supposed to come to me. The raise, mm. the promotion, mm. all of it. Because, baby, you can't do what I do. Trust. So that's one. You got to be confident in your abilities to be amazing and, and work in excellence. But at the same time, we're going to share this burden. <laughs> okay? Because if you're going home at 5 o'clock, I'm going home at 5 o'clock. Let's go. Are we that on the part. A train together? <laughs> what are we doing? We sharing an Uber? Is that an Uber pool? Let's go. That part. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So when talking about just like abundance and everything, I know you're teaming up with TJ Maxx to launch your very own mentorship program, Find Your Max. I guess, can you talk to us, you know, about this initiative? What does it mean for women? What does this partnership mean to you in specific? Well, I wish my very own mentorship program, they had this program, it's been around for what, six years or so? Um, mm. About six, three years. This is the first year. This is the first year? Oh, it was called something else. You to the max. You to the max. Exactly. See, I, I was like, wait a minute. Um, yes, it was called You to the Max, but now it's Find Your Max. And so I, I am going to be able to mentor one lucky winner. Um, oh, wow. And I, what I love about it, though, it is about aligning people to their like best self, their most authentic self. And I, that's, that is the sexiness. That is the luxury. Because when you walk and operate in your best self, you show up as that. Everything else just kind of bows down to you, you know? And it's like, and it's it's not only reserved for certain women or for, you know, people who are over there. No, girl, it's your your max life is reserved for you. Like, who else gonna right. live it? Right. But you. So I think, you know, a lot of times, especially black women, we, we put other people first, you know, we people please. We yes. self sabotage. We, you know, we don't accept compliments when somebody tells you you look amazing. Guilty, Hello. guilty as charged. <laughs> so it's just yes. like it's just simple things. It's it's even that, and so it's like your max self. Like my max self right now tells me I'm proud of you all the time. Like if mm. I if I parallel park correctly the first time, I'm like, girl, look at you. You didn't even have to reverse and come back out and go back in. You did it in one turn. Look at you driving better than you did yesterday. I tell myself, I'm proud of me for the little wins all the way to the big wins. Like, look at you. You just sold that show. Like, girl, you did it. You finished a tour. Like, have you stopped Mm. to tell yourself how proud you are of you? So that's what my max, uh, so that's my max voice tells me. Um, And that's not something I used to do. I wasn't as kind to myself before. And now I'm just like, if I don't tell me I'm proud of me, who else is? And also, I need to tell me, it's funny because somebody sent me a text and they told me, they're like, I'm proud of you. And I said, I'm proud of me too. Thank you. Mm. And I was like, this would be received really wrongly. But I was like, why? Why would I even be thinking about that? Because it is what it is. I'm proud of me. And I need you to know I'm proud of me too. But thank you for your compliment. I receive it. (laughs) We can both be Seriously. I know, like, I think that's the thing too. Again, we're just, that being too humble aspect has often like resulted in people like walking all over us and viewing us one way when it's like, no, like I'm that girl. Like 
period, you know? Um, yeah. So I guess, and yeah. Confidence look like so many different things. Sometimes it's a quiet confidence. Sometimes I don't even have to say anything. It's like, y'all know what it is when I show up. Right. <laughs> and if you don't, somebody gonna tell you about it. So, you know, as a, and sometimes you have to be like, hi, how are you? I does this. So any questions? Great. I didn't think we had any. Have a great day. You know, so it's just the confidence right. can look like a lot of different things. Right, right. What is some advice you would give to women, I guess, who are just pressured to put on a face, you know, like a front, everything is okay all the time, and to also just mm -hmm. prioritize the needs of others before their own? And like, listen, I, I understand that I am sitting literally in a seat of luxury where in, especially in entertainment versus say corporate America, I right. get the ability to be the me that I'm supposed to be, however I'm supposed to be her. Right. Um, because the, the nature of the industry is that like, I, I'm, I'm partnering with TJ Maxx because of the me that I have been, that is in alignment with the project that they have, you know, and sometimes in corporate America, you have to show up as what the the corporate culture deems acceptable. And sometimes that means being a shell of yourself. And I know that there are sometimes people feel like they can't leave that job because of X, Y, and Z. And, you know, I, I, I don't want to ever be like, leave your job, girl. I, I think that's what Beyonce told some people to do. And I think some people, uh, wait a minute. Um, mm, I don't know if you, I don't know if that advice was for you because you have bills. Okay. She has billions. Yes. Those are two right, things. Right, right, right. <laughs> Bills and billions don't match. So, right. <laughs> uh, but you know, do find the work that is so fulfilling. I think there's some people who know they should leave their job to start their own company, but they're afraid. Right. So it's like, well, why are you delaying what your max productivity would be because you're mm. afraid? Why are you delaying what you know? Everyone tells you you bake the best cookies. Everybody, like literally, people don't even want gifts from you. They want your cookies. I mean, like actual cookies, not the, okay, you know what? <laughs> Hold on. I heard it. But so <laughs> bake, <laughs> bake the cookies, start the shop, bake you know, the sell it. Yes. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, because we all have something that we have the ability to do. And sometimes people are sitting on that gift and it's like, nah, your max self is waiting for you to bust open. And so you can be literally what other people need. Right. And right. They're waiting on you to be amazing so that they have the freedom and the liberty to be amazing themselves. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think like, you know, just in the topic of discussion, a lot of people are just afraid of taking risks. And it's the uncertainty, the not knowing. It's like, okay, well, what if I take this risk and I fall flat on my face and I'll stay you there? <laughs> you know? face, yeah, you, you just never flat. know. Yeah. Let's and then you try or, again. Right. Or you don't fall flat. Mm. Or... Part of taking that step that you fell flat in is that you met somebody who will pick you back up and now y'all are business partners. You okay? It could yes. work. Yeah. Work together for good. You have no idea. Yeah. The universe is abundant. And I think that's important for us to always remember. There's, there's one thing after the next. There's one opportunity. Just be in the vibration, the energy that you're ready to receive and be open to it. And it'll come to you. It'll come to you. Seriously. You know, when you talked about the luxury of it all, I think yeah. sometimes when people hear luxury, they mm. think like, you know, first class or private jets. The luxury is knowing that there is not scarcity. Right? right or not right. operating from a scarcity mindset that's luxurious to be like right. i fully expect when i show up things conspire together for my goodness i fully expect that in rooms that i have never entered my name is being spoken of favorably you know that right. that is luxury to believe right. that you're you're worth it you're enough to believe that you're enough not because someone else told you but because you believe it for yourself and right. because you believe it for yourself, everyone else has to fall in line. That's luxury. That part, like that's, that's all it is. And that actually leads me to my next question. Can you walk us through your amazing journey of, again, just embracing your natural beauty, your natural self in Hollywood? Has anyone ever told you to be less than or to hide who you really are within that spectrum? No, I mean, I think I was the one not believing that I was beautiful. I, I think it, mm. it took the pandemic for me to be like, girl, you are fine. Right, right. <laughs> because it's like, you know, I was bullied as a kid. And, you know, those sometimes, you know, those scars run deep, you know. And so, you know, it's the thing of I used to say, you know, I'm not wake up pretty. I'm get ready cute. And it was like, what does that mean? And it's like you tell yourself that and it sound, it's a funny joke. But then it's like, 
Mm-mm, I don't know that those are the words that I should be speaking to myself that actually help me feel better about myself. Right. And so right. it took me um, really being able to like stop and be like, well, what is the hindrance to when you have no makeup on, when you are just your raw self, what's hindering you from being like, I am beautiful with nothing on, no lashes, no concealer, no bronzer. And I had to work to tell myself that. And then I started believing it. And now you can't tell me nothing, baby. I look you like this. I look you when the the hair is off, the lashes are gone, and just out the shower. I feel like this. You look at your skin thriving. Look at your pores. Right. Right. Look at your pores. So uh, it took me. It took me a while to get there. And I think everything changed when I could honestly believe that for myself. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah, I think again, it's just self love. It's really a journey. It's a journey and. It's something that you have to practice every single day. I feel like you don't reach this one period in your life where it's like, oh, like I've loved myself. I've done all the work. Nothing else needs to be done. And then, you know, it's like the next day you'll feel like, oh, well, today's not my day. I don't really feel as beautiful or as amazing as I did yesterday. So and that's okay because every day is a journey and every day is a new season. Some days right. you feel like I am winning. And other days you're like, I need a nap. You know, it's just, right. it's okay. All, all, feel all the feelings, you know, especially as women, we try to not, we try to power through or not feel the feelings. And it's just like, no, boo-boo, feel your feelings and you're not, not strong. You're not weak for being like, I'm tired for being like, I don't have it today. I don't, right. and I, I can't show for anyone today because I can't show for myself. Right. And so that's not, that's what you needed today. And the reality is sometimes we think, oh, well, if we don't do this, then who will? Somebody else will. Because I guarantee if you didn't show up, they will find somebody else. Mm. Somebody else. <laughs> you know, so, yes, you know giving yourself that break to, to be your max whenever you show up. And if you feel anything less than your max, it's like, well, what is your body telling you you need in order to get back to your max? Mm. Rest. <laughs> I need to go in the bed and I'll see you guys when I see you. <laughs> Some days I just, I'm, if I get so tired, some days I literally just go outside and get some vitamin D mm. and just a little bit of sun, taking some deep breaths, and then I can come back and be like, okay, I'm ready. I'm recharged. Right. That's incredible. Um, can you just like provide a little bit of advice? I know, especially for the young black women, the Gen Z millennials who are just like, you know what? I want to quit. I want to give up. I don't. I don't have it like that. I can't be in this industry, you know, like just anything to kind of help them see like, no, it is worth it. Continue to do the work, continue to put in the effort to get to your dreams and your goals. Well, first I would say, well, what is it that you're trying to quit? Because Mm. there are some things that you're supposed to quit. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Like I, I was supposed to quit some jobs and I did did a lot of quitting. Okay. Um, I I quit jobs before I had another job lined up because I was like, I just can't take this. Right, and sometimes right. it made things harder, but I knew I was like, if I stay here, it's just, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to, it's a safety net. And I, and I don't, I don't, they asked me one more question. I'm, it's not going to end well for one of us. So let me leave, <laughs> let me leave. Right. And so depending on what it is that you're supposed to quit, I would say quit. Um, because that quitting is actually what's going to propel you to live in your max and going to find the thing that you're supposed to do, i.e. your purpose. But if you're already walking and working towards your purpose, well, yeah, you, you, well, you can't even try to quit your purpose. You can try, but it's, it's going to find you. It's your purpose mm. is the thing that you're supposed to do. Right. And right. so that is when I would say lean in. You're scared. That's fair. We all are. I still get nervous every day. I, I hate self-tape auditions. I hate them, but I got to do them if I want to get the next job. And so it's just like, all right, well, how do, who do I surround myself with to help me in this process? Because if I do it by myself, I'm not going to do it. And then I'll I'll pass on a roll. Right. Right. So let's not do that. What do you, what do you know that you have to put around you in order to maximize the moment? Right. Hmm. So I would say, don't stifle the feeling. The feeling is coming from probably fear, but I always say, I hate regret more than I hate fear. That's actually a chapter in my book, Ben Boozled by Jesus. Um, But really, I do. I hate regret more than I hate fear because if 10 years from now, five years from now, six months from now, because I gave up, I see somebody else living my dream, (laughs) married to my man. Oh, oh, it's not going to end well. I'm not. Black, black, no trade backs. What are we doing? Can we we go? Let's run this tape back. 
And so I never want to get to that place because that's when your your I mean your regret stifles more people than fear ever did, right? And so fear is fear is just false evidence appearing real. It makes you it's, it's the Wizard of Oz. It smokes you. And once okay. you pull the curtain back, you're like. That was what was stopping. This is some. This is some nonsense. So I would say just push past, push past it because you don't want to get to the other side and see that you stopped five seconds short of the victory. That that will hurt my soul for you. Mm. So I don't want that. Mm. Much needed advice. Thank you so much. And just ending us off, what are a few black-owned brands off the top of your head that you will support day and night for the rest of the year? Beauty, fashion, even like candles, anything. Uh, Black Girl Sunscreen, I really like. Uh, Mess in a Bottle. Uh, do, 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 a Brooklyn Candle Company. Mm, love that. I mean, Fenty. Yes, exactly. Um, there's so many. There's so many. There's so many. There's so many. I can't think of them all of my off the top of my head because I'm tired. <laughs> And you know what? I don't have to answer these questions when I'm tired. Oh, I mean, honestly, your answers are perfect. So we can honestly leave off with that. But thank you so much, Yvonne. It was yes. Oh, and Lip Bar. I, 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 I can't oh, yes. forget Lip Bar. Love them. Love them. Yes. Love them so much. But thank you so much for speaking with us on behalf of 2190 and Blavity. It was so amazing just sitting down, picking your brain and talking to you. Again, just wishing you all the best, abundance, even more success. Just the soft girl life. Okay. You and I receive it. it all, and I receive it all. And for any of your um, constituents, they can uh, enter at findyourmax.com. That's two X's. If they want to hear more from me, I could possibly be their mentor. Yes, I don't know. Most definitely, that would be cool. That'd be an amazing opportunity. <laughs> right. But thank you so much again for speaking with us.